Marine plywood is used in the construction of docks and boats. You can't use standard plywood in such wet environments. Marine plywood isn't affected by moisture because it's made from sheets of a tropical hardwood that's naturally water resistant and bonded with water resistant glue. Marine plywood is typically used in boats for flooring, bulkheads and furniture. The surface is typically a decorative type of wood veneer such as oak, maple, teak or mahogany. The core, however, is made of bonded layers of okume, a water-resistant species that grows in the hot and humid equatorial forest of Gabon in Africa. When the okume logs arrive at the factory, an automated chainsaw cuts half the shipment into pieces measuring the length of a finished panel of plywood and the other half into pieces measuring the width of a finished panel. This produces logs with the grain running in one direction as well as logs with the grain running in the opposite direction. This is critical because when they construct the plywood, they'll crisscross grain directions to add strength. Next, the logs go through a series of rotary blades, which progressively shave off the bark. The now barkless logs enter the rotary peeling machine. It works like a giant pencil sharpener, shaving off a continuous thin sheet called a ply, hence the term plywood. The ply is between 1 and 3 millimeters thick, depending on its position in the finished panel. Blades on both sides trim the ply, producing neat, straight edges. Then the machine rolls up the ply. The next machine unwinds the continuous ply and slices it into separate plies. If the log that produced this roll was one of those cut to the 2.5 meter length of a finished plywood panel, then this machine makes a cut every 1.2 meters, the width of the finished panel, and vice versa. This thickness of plywood has a 5-ply core. Three of the plies remain dry, while two go through this machine, which rolls strong, water-resistant glue simultaneously on both sides. Now, assembly begins. Alternating grain directions, the first ply is a dry one, the second a glued one. The bottom of it sticks to the ply underneath, the top to the dry third ply that goes over it. The next ply, the fourth, is a glued one. The bottom sticks to the ply underneath, and the top to the fifth and final ply, a dry one, above. Workers use a powerful pneumatic staple gun to attach this assembled core along the front edge so that it doesn't come apart as it enters the press. The press holds 10 core assemblies at a time. The current thickness of a core is the sum of the plies plus glue. The press will reduce that by 10%. It applies about 12 kilograms per square centimeter of pressure, while at the same time heating the core to 120 degrees Celsius to literally cook the adhesive. The core exits the press after seven minutes. The ply is now perfectly flat and solidly bonded. The wood veneer for the core's decorative facing is very thin, barely more than half a millimeter. To create a pattern resembling a hardwood floor, they join two strips at a time with a wavy thread of glue. Next, they join the two mated strips to two others, and so on, until the assembled veneers are the length and width of the plywood core. The core, meanwhile, goes through the glue machine, which coats both top and bottom with adhesive. The veneer sheet is also glued, but on one side only. Workers lay the veneer glued side up, then carefully place the core onto it. A second veneer, glued side down, goes on top. The okume core is now sandwiched between two decorative wood veneers. The press applies the same heat and pressure as it did to the core assembly, but just for one minute. The result? A finished sheet of, in this case, cherry veneered marine plywood. Marine plywood comes not just in a variety of veneer choices, but also in a range of thicknesses, typically comprised of 3 to 13 plies, always an odd number in order to have equal weight on either side of the central ply for balance.